One of the greatest benefits of Hero Player is the fact that it will allow your artists to see their shot in context of the entire sequence, whilst giving them the full versioning and review functionality that you find in the main seat of Hero. Now in this video, I'm going to be going over that entire workflow. We'll be starting here in Hero itself with our conformed project. We'll export that out to a file structure on disk that our visual effects artists can see, and then they will open up Hero Player to view a complete copy of this sequence. From there, they can very easily open any shot directly in Nuke before rendering out multiple versions and bringing them back for review directly on their own station. Now, I will be covering the Hero Nuke and Hero Player Nuke workflows in a later video, but for now, let's look at this top section. So we'll be starting, as I mentioned here inside of Hero, with our completed, conformed Nissan X-Trail project. Now, I won't be covering how I conformed this project inside of Hero in this video. There are already some videos up on our YouTube and Vimeo channels to do that. However, I will be covering the two things we need to do to prep this project for use with Hero Player. Now, the first one of these is to take our files and export them to disk. So I'm going to come up here and grab my sequence, come up to File and Export, exactly like you would have done before. And then I'm going to use our process as shots method with my basic nuke shot preset that, of course, ships with Hero. Now inside this preset, uh, we have a very basic project structure containing essentially a nuke project file and a render location. And this render path will of course be added to the right node in our generated nuke script. Now of course you'd probably push this out to a centralized location, although in this case I am going out to my desktop. Uh, and so once all of this is in place, I'm going to come down and check my handles. So I'm going out with 12 frames of handles in this case. I've set my start frame to a custom value of 1001, something that's obviously very common. Now with the handles set, I'm going to come over here and look at my tracks. And uh, this is quite easy in this project because I only have one track in the entire sequence. Uh, so I'm just going to make sure that that's checked and then come down and hit export. Now when you do this, here is going to go away and generate a nuke script for every single shot on our timeline inside of that structure on disk for me. But what some of you may have noticed is that we've also got that nuke tag down here on our shots. And this is going to be very, very important later on in our project. So I'm just going to frame that again by hitting F. So that's the first step created. We've exported our project out to disk. Now the second step is to create a place on our timeline for any renders to come back into. So to do that, I'm going to select all of my shots. I'm going to right click and instead of build external media track, I'll now go to build track from export tag. Now essentially, whenever we export a shot with a nuke project preset, it will add on one of those nuke tags. And if you do that five times, it will have five nuke tags. And when we build track from export tag, all of those nuke tags will appear in this left hand section of this list. Now we want to choose the one that is associated with the export that we've just completed, which of course, as there's only one in the list, we know is this top one here. Let me get a little bit of info over here on the right hand side, just saying which shots are associated with that export. We can also choose a custom track name if we want, but in this case I'll leave it to VFX and hit build. Hero is now going to generate that VFX track for us, on which it will place an offline item for every single shot that formed part of that export. And with that, we're done. We're ready to pass this project out to our Hero Player users. So I'm going to come up to File and hit Save Main Project. I'm going to now close down Hero. And when you see me again, I'll be using Hero Player. So this is Hero Player 1.6 v1. Now this will sit on your artist's machines alongside uh, their VFX software. So in this case, I'll be using Nuke. And the first thing that I want to do now is come up to my file menu and find that hero project that we just saved out in the main hero seat. So I'm going to come up to open. I'm going to come and find that main project in my Nissan folder, which is there, and click open. And it will look very similar to what we just saw inside of hero, but with one or two key differences. So down here on our timeline, we've got our graded, we've got our VFX tracks, exactly like we created. Of course, we've still got our nuke tags down there as well, which again will come in um, important in a second. We've also got our main project containing everything that we had inside of our project bin inside of Hero. However, you'll notice that this is now bright blue instead of yellow. And this blue, which occurs everywhere we try to select, signifies that this is now a locked project. I cannot come into this project inside of Hero Player, select anything and delete it, select something down the timeline and edit it. This is a completely locked project. 
Now the reasoning behind this is that this is the project that the Hero Master Seat has created for us, and they've spent probably a fair bit of time getting everything right and prepping it, and we don't want to go in and as an artist mess that up for them. So in this case, Hero Player has locked the project for us. Now if we do want to unlock this later on down the line, we can do it, and I'll be showing you that a little later on, but for now we're going to work with a locked project as it stands. So at this point, I'm already in quite a useful situation, where, thanks to Hero Player, I can now see every single shot in this sequence in context, and I'm sure you can see how useful that could be to an artist. Now this usefulness is really continued once we start jumping into Nuke, so why don't we take a quick look at trying out a shot. So I want to try shot 90, so I'm going to come into here and zoom in. And here is shot 90 down on our graded track, and you can see it's still got its little Nuke tag icon. Now this nuke tag contains a lot of information about this shot, for instance where the nuke script that was generated is being stored on disk or on your network, and where the rendered images should end up. Now this allows me to very easily come into the shot itself, and directly from the timeline I can open it straight up in nuke. So let's do that, I'm going to right click it, come to our nuke menu, and click open in nuke. So Hero has all of the information it needs to find that script on disk, it knows exactly which version of Nuke I want to open, which in this case is version 7, and it's going to pop Nuke up with that script already opened. So there's Nuke, and there's our script, ready to go. So inside the script you can see that not only do we have the plate, we've also got a few other nodes that ensure that everything inside of Nuke looks exactly as it did inside of Hero Player, so it's a seamless transition between the two. Now probably most importantly at the bottom here, we have the right node, which has been completely set up for us, but in the file path at the end you notice we have this version token, and we're going to use this in a second to allow us to bring multiple versions from Nuke back into Hero Player. So let's take a look at our footage, it's a uh, robot roaming through the forest here, or the snow covered floor. Uh, so we're going to do a quick first pass at this, so I'm going to take this down, bring in a grade node, I'm going to come up to my gain, and we're going to make this a little bit blue perhaps. So I'm going to close my grade settings, come over into my right node, and without thinking about anything, because it's all been set up for us, I'm going to hit render. Now just before I hit OK, usually once this process has been done, you end up with some files on disk that you have to manually go and find. Well that's all changed with Hero Player, now it's going to seamlessly pop into Hero Player, right in place for you to review straight away. So let's take a look at that, I'm going to hit OK, it's going to start rendering, and I'll quickly pop back into Hero Player so we can take a look. And what we should see is that as soon as the shot is finished rendering, it will pop straight into place. So I'm going to hit uh, H here just to frame this. I'm going to select my shot and hit Shift A to set my in and out points, and just start playing that back so we can see what I've got in version 1. Now you might like this, I personally think maybe it needs to be a little bit more green. So we go back over here into Nuke, back into my grade node, back into my gain. I'm going to make it a little bit more green this time close down my grade settings and come back into my right node. Now in order to change this value we could manually edit it, however an easier way is to use the alt, up and down hotkeys on your keyboard. So I'm going to set this to version 2 up here, and then going to hit render again, not having to think about anything, and hit OK. Now I'll pop back into Hero once more, and what we should see is version 2 will now pop in on top of version 1. And there it is. And again, we can play this back and compare the two versions. To do this, I can either select the track item down on the timeline itself, right click and use the version menu to version up and down, get the maximum version or the minimum version. And of course, it's worth noting that these have exactly the same hotkeys as versioning up and down in Nuke, as I showed you earlier. But a more visual way of doing it is to come down and again select the track item and hit the V key on your keyboard. And this will display all of the versions for that current shot. I can also bring up this popover directly in the viewer itself, making it really easy to switch directly whilst you're playing back and reviewing your final shots. Another great thing about Hero Player is that not only do you get to see your own shots in context, but potentially other artists' shots as well. So for instance, while we've been doing this shot, I know that someone else has been working on shot 10 down here at the start of a timeline. So I can select that shot in question, right click it, and come up and scan for versions. And you can see that it finds two new versions additional to the one that was already there, which has now come online. So I can hit OK, bring my playhead back to the start, hit X on my keyboard to set in and out points on the current clip, and play back. And what you'll notice is that I have the same control with my V toggle in the viewport to switch between the different versions on the fly as quickly as I want. 
and you can see how useful this would be, especially if shots either side of yours are changing throughout the VFX process. Now of course, in addition to all of the versioning functionality inside of Hero Player, you also have review tools. So if I come up here to my window, workspace, reviewing, you can see over here on the right hand side, not only do we have tags for creating notes on shots, we also have your histogram, your waveform and your vector scope as well. Earlier on I mentioned that even though this is a locked project, if you really want to, you can save this in a state that you can edit. And to do that, you need to save it as a hero player project instead of a hero project. Now to do that, I'm gonna come up to my file menu and come down and use the only save option we have available, save as player project. So I'll click this. I'm gonna save this as player project and hit save. Now when I do immediately, you'll notice that the highlighting down here on the timeline and up here in the project bin has become orange. So no longer is it that blue color, it is now orange exactly like on a regular seat of Hero, meaning you can edit it. So I can come in here at this point if I want to, and let's say we just want one shot on either side of my two shots, shot 10 and shot 90. I can grab everything else and just hit delete. We also have full access to all of Hero's timeline editing tools, so the rolling, the slipping, the sliding, etc. So control over handles and versions, exactly as you would expect to find in Hero. We can also add things and remove things from the project bins up here as much as you want. And I'll be touching on that a little bit more in another video later on. Now at this point I would continue working, adding more versions until I was completely happy with my shots. And at that point we would probably want to go back to Hero to do our export. So at this point, why don't we close down Hero Player, reopen Hero, and see what this sequence looks like. So here we are, back inside of Hero 1.6 v1. I'm going to come up to our file menu and open up our main project. Now remember this is the locked project, uh, I'm not going to load the autosave. But what you'll see is that because the files now exist on disk, they're now online, they're no longer read. So these initial versions, version 1 of shot 10 and shot 90, is now in place. Now what I can do is grab both of those shots, like so. I can quickly do a scan for versions on them, and it should find some extra versions for me, because of course those extra versions exist on disk. And I'll also come into our right click, version menu, and go to max version. And of course there's a nice handy keyboard shortcut for that as well. So essentially what I've done at this point, as the person on the hero seat, is quickly scan for all of the versions of all of the shots in my sequence, and quickly bring them all up to the latest version. Now whether this is for a review process, or for the final finishing process, you can see just how quick this is. Now I haven't even touched on the Python capabilities of this process whatsoever. You do have full Python inside of Hero Player, just like you do inside of Hero. Now obviously if you don't have Python tech people at your facility, you can do an awful lot with both applications. If you do, however, you can really push this workflow, really integrating it with your existing pipeline. So that is a quick look at one workflow that utilizes Hero, Hero Player, and Nuke in production, and you can see just how quickly you can pass information between all three applications. So in the next video, I'm going to be touching on a few of the other extra things that you can do inside of Hero Player.